Hello friends, hope you guys doing good. My name is Sai, I'm a third year medical student and in today's video we will be talking about marrow, specifically on how I use marrow. So lately for the past couple of months marrow has been my go-to for academics along with online classes of course. So my approach with marrow is quite different and that is exactly what I want to share with you guys today. Firstly and most importantly, it has been doing more questions. As a third year medical student, I know how tempting it is just to focus on the videos and not care about the question bank. Seeing those numbers of videos rising up and also finally getting that tick mark once you finish a certain subject, it is really tempting. But don't let that prevent you from doing the question bank. And this is something that I want you guys to keep in mind. Focus on the question bank. Prioritize on the question bank and then only comes the videos. Even when I knew that doing more questions was important, I still used to fall back on watching the videos. Doing questions is an active process. Whereas watching videos is a passive process. You don't have to put as much as effort into it. Doing more questions and solving the question bank gives you a clear picture of what you know and what you don't know. So you can clearly emphasize on the topics that you are weak on. It is like the difference between knowing and understanding. If you watched a video, you will know something about it. Let's say I asked about something. You will be able to recognize that information because you have learned about it. But in order to truly understand the information, I think we have to implement it. And the best way to implement the information, I guess, is to solve the questions. And also making mistakes while solving the questions helps us to remember and recall the information better. So here are some things that will help you to do more questions. And that is, firstly, is to start your day with questions. So let us say that yesterday you finished X and Y lectures. So today, to start your day off, you would start by doing the question banks on X and Y. This routine, I believe, can encourage you to do more question banks. Another thing that I believe you guys will find helpful is to finish the corresponding question banks right after doing the lectures. So let's say you finished X lecture. You would do the question bank of X lecture right away. So this way you will be encouraged to do more questions and doing questions will become a part of your routine. And that is a habit I believe that we all should cultivate, doing more questions. Right now I'm doing about two modules a day, about 50 questions and I'm trying to push that to three and to four. Hopefully I can keep up with it. Being in third year, I think I have time. I think. If I was in fourth year or final year, I would do at least five modules a day. Because trust me, there is a lot. There is a lot of questions to be covered. And only by doing a couple of modules each day, I think that we can finish those questions. Now with question bank out of the way, let's talk about the next big thing, which is the videos. The very reason why we bought Plan C. Nairo says that there are about 700 hours of videos. And let's say if we were to finish about two hours of videos per day, it would still take 350 days, around one year to finish all the videos, provided we stay consistent. Because again, um, only consistency can help us finish these videos. So I always have this in mind to finish at least one video per day. Now that is a minimum requirement. Two or three would be ideal, but right now one video per day is a must. And while watching these videos, one thing I always keep in mind is to watch these videos at a higher speed. So for me specifically, I found that 1.8x is a sweet spot. Basically, it is a trade-off between comprehension and between speed. So more the speed, less is the comprehension. And also I think it varies with person to person and also based on the subject. For example, I would watch ENT at 1.8x, no problem. Even at 2x, no problem. But whereas something like medicine, if I were to watch medicine at 1.8x, my head would blast. I mean, the information is so dense that I, I remember watching this one concept multiple times because I just couldn't grasp it. And what I did was watch at 0.7x just to understand what Saro was actually talking about. So it greatly depends on both the teacher and our ability uh, to comprehend. I think you should try to push yourself to the next mark, to the next mark, because I have heard people say that uh, 2x is not sufficient for them. They want 2.5 and they want 3x. Don't worry because you can certainly train yourself to watch at higher speeds. You know, I started off at 1.2x, then I transitioned to 1.5 and I thought 1.5 was a sweet spot. And then I kind of tried 1.8x after a certain while and I found that it was not too bad. So we can all push ourselves to watch at higher speeds. And now coming to the final part and that is why I don't make notes. By notes, what I mean is the conventional pen and paper method, you know, just jotting down 
everything that lecturer says that is something that i currently completely refrain from i don't take notes whatsoever this is a huge controversy because almost everyone out there talks about making notes making notes help you to revise making notes help you to retain the information better and also gives you that edge during the last couple of months of exam helping you to revise the whole of the syllabus in a short period of time and most of the toppers say how they made notes and why note making was the most crucial part of their preparation but i found i kind of found a different way about it and don't get me wrong because i do believe that note taking is an essential part of studying and revising but i feel that it was not for me let me explain so the way i see it i think there are four phases to how we learn firstly there is a reading that is the first time we approach any subject then comes writing which is essentially note taking writing down all the information which is important which is relevant then comes revising and retaining the information and finally comes a part where we recall and reproduce the information note taking is basically just one part of this whole equation the the problem with me was that i was spending too much time on note taking and writing down the information that i couldn't spend as much as time for retaining and recalling the information so it was a big trade off so that is why i decided to ditch note taking and hence my issues with note taking were the following firstly it was taking too much time and secondly was that one could not differentiate between the notes i made and from a standard textbook because i would write every other point that i thought was important and i would just copy into my notes every important point in my textbook you could find it in my notes that was how brilliant my note taking was pure brilliance so i ended up making this huge collection of notes which was basically everything written in the textbook except in my own handwriting with with a couple of colors writing down and making these notes basically gave me an illusion that i was studying an illusion that i was putting in the work but on hindsight all i was doing was rewriting textbooks and also making notes and summarizing information has been shown to be a poor strategy for retaining the information so all in all note taking for me was a big nope but you see there is a big problem with me and that is that I have to gather the information somehow how else can I revise that is where flashcards come in so instead of making notes i make flashcards i do this in an app a software called anki it is a digital software so so every note i take is basically me typing it down i also likely type faster than i can write so that's good the biggest reason why i moved to anki is because all the subject notes are given in mado pdf and everything that is explained in the videos is available as mado notes as as pdf versions it's it's available on the net so essentially all i have to do is take a screenshot and just add it to my notes and and there you have it i can easily just copy paste all the notes mado notes the notes they provide have almost 95% of the information 95% of the stuff verbatim how the teacher has explained they have given in the notes and then i thought to myself what is the point of making these notes making these beautiful notes if every information is out there what's the point of making all these notes i could simply skip that step of writing down notes directly to retaining the information that was the thing that i had been missing and with anki it kind of shows you these flash cards in a regular manner so that the revision is taken care of so that is a gist of why i don't make notes the pen and paper method because one because i can type much faster than i can write and secondly all the information is right there all i have to do is just to search for it and just copy into my flash cards basically you could say it is digital note taking digital note taking with flash cards that's that's what it is so the takeaway points from this video firstly do more questions start today with questions emphasize on questions make doing questions the highest priority and coming to videos watch at least one or two videos a day at least it is and necessity and watch these videos at a higher speed for example 1.8x or 1.5x see what works for you and about note taking if you find yourself wasting too much time making notes emphasizing too much on note taking and finding yourself having no time to revise information i think you should seriously check out matter notes because they are a huge time saver i hope you guys learn something new from this video with that being said please do give this video a like and also subscribe much appreciated it's getting late i'll see you in the next one and good night peace